States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps, the Commandant Zone. The words alone start feet tapping and hearts thumping. In the rousing, crashing world of peerless military pageantry, the United States Marine Corps brings to the parade deck all the thunder and elan that make it a legend on the battlefield. As always in the Marine Corps, such miracles of precision and discipline do not happen accidentally or without pain and sacrifice. The brilliant routines are rooted in two centuries of musical and battle tradition. The pageantry of the Corps is not just the best of the Marines' flawless and thrilling marches and drills, but the story of a magnificent heritage of perfection that goes into the making of a Marine on parade. Washington, D.C. represents the magnificent best of the best. Here, every Marine is handpicked in a painstaking, forbiddingly competitive routine that never stops driving for deeper perfection. From the grimly efficient fast response security force that protects the President, to the flawless silent drill team, these are fighting Marines. But they are ceremonial Marines, too. The best America can present to stir the national blood and represent the United States to the highest echelon of world dignitaries. And at the glorious heart of one of the world's most thrilling military pageants are the twin prides of the Marines, the fabled United States Marine Band brought to international fame by John Philip Sousa and the Bravura United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps. history of the Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. began on March 31st, 1801. President Thomas Jefferson rode out with Marine Commandant Lieutenant Colonel William Ward Burroughs to choose a site that was close to both the Capitol and the Washington Navy Yard. The installation has been occupied continuously by the Marines since that year. The one interruption came when the British captured and burned Washington during the War of 1812. The barracks' stately Commandant's House, now the oldest continuously occupied government building in Washington, was miraculously spared the torch. Some say it's because the British decided to occupy part of it, but uh, most of the British, even, that visit us from time to time still refer that the main reason was because there was a gentleman and his lady that lived there and they would not interfere, plus the respect they had from the American Marines. The stunningly manicured Marine barracks has become the center, the treasury of the long glories of the United States Marine Corps. The Marines of today here keep alive in America's heart the memory of 200 years of their Corps' storied battle history as it raged from Tripoli to Chapultepec, Bull Run to Bellow Wood, Iwo Jima to Quezon and Desert Storm.
organization you know, has a soul. Every organization has something which, uh, which makes it, which is important to it, and it has a past which it has to tie itself to. And, and that's what this parade does. This is not a job, it's, it's a love. And uh, I can only describe it in one way. You would have to be standing out there in front of them and lift your hands up and give the downbeat and feel the emotional involvement, feel the excitement, feel the thrill, uh, and you feel like you're 19 again. You feel like you've just had your first kiss. The United States Marine Band played at inaugural festivities for President Thomas Jefferson in 1801 and at every inauguration since. It lifted its instruments as Abraham Lincoln spoke at Gettysburg. The excellence and reputation of the Marine Band grew throughout the 19th century. Beginning in 1880, the band evolved into a classic musical ensemble under the baton of the immortal John Philip Sousa as director. During the 12 years of his storied reign, there poured from him an incredible stream of the greatest military marches ever written. Washington Post March, El Capitan, The Thunderer, Semper Fidelis, Stars and Stripes Forever became not just the musical bedrock of the Marine Corps, but of United States patriotism itself. The growing fame of the Marine Band increasingly took it on the road to show the Republic the gold standard of military concerts. Today, the band's standards are rigorously high and their maintenance as difficult as their attainment. The band is the oldest professional music group in America. It averages 700 performances a year, 200 for the president. For the Americans of the present day, it, it ties them back to 200 years of Marine Corps history and tradition. It, it uh, lets the American people know what, what it's meant to be a Marine for 200 years. The Marine Band's brilliant brother ensemble at the barracks is the United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps. Drummers and buglers have been an integral part of the United States Marine Corps since the inception of the Corps in 1775. Uh, originally, Fifes and drums were the uh, principal utilization of, of, of music to communicate to all of our troops in the field. The Drum and Bugle Corps was the inspiration of General Lemuel Shepard, who came to the Washington barracks as a young guard officer in 1934. Lemuel Shepard was deep-rooted in Marine Corps history, and it was his idea to take a corps of buglers that were here studying to be field musics and put them together and form a core of bugles and drums. And such was the case that on November the 4th, 1934, the birth of the United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps came into being. <laughs> out in front of marine marching music are its splendid drums major. Their strut and majesty set not just the beat and the maneuvers, but present another thrilling instrument in the spectacle. Drum majors came into effect in the 1590s, and uh, they were called chief drummers then. They were in charge of the drums, and they were responsible for keeping the drum beat. He was responsible for keeping the beat in the heat of battle, moving the uh, units back and forth, making sure that the drummers, uh, the buglers, were passing along the correct calls. Uh, the mace or the shaft uh, is an instrument that the drum major carries uh, to actually keep the beat, the rhythm, the tempo, uh, as well as to give field commands. The drum majors of Napoleon's army were very, very flamboyant with these. Uh, 
Uh, off time when they were going to battle, it was uh, the more flamboyant was, the more uh, it was used to uh, scare or intimidate uh, an opposing force. The mace weighs about five to six pounds. Uh, it was uh, made by a gentleman in New York. It is handcrafted. Uh, it is uh, a very elaborate instrument. Uh, it takes about uh, about three or four years of uh, steady practice with it uh, to get uh, being used to it. The Marines are a renowned battle unit before they are anything, and the drums major's traditional garb recalls the great and bloody moments. This is called a baltric or a sash. Originally, when the, uh, the drum majors wore them back in the Napoleon time, back in the early British times, it would have, uh, it would be embroidered with gold and silver uh, thread, and it would have a unit or regimental crest on it, and then it would have all of the honors of that crest. No less home to ceremonial perfection are the Washington Barracks 250 strong contingent of rigorously chosen fleet Marines. With their awesome silent drill team and meshed with the Corps' matchless musicians, the result is martial magic. What you do is you see the embodiment of what it means to be a Marine. All the Marines here are screened to come here, so they say we're the cream of the crop of the Marine Corps, and then I think the drill team is the cream of the crop of Marine Barracks. People hear with their eyes, so what we try to do is create visually that uh, same excitement that the musical score brings. of all the dedication, all the hardship, all the repetition and drilling will come forth in the elements of one of the most hallowed and honored of all the world's pageantry ceremonies, the Washington Marine Barracks Parade. The ringing of two bells to begin marks an electric moment for anyone who has ever let his blood race to the crashing cadences of ceremonial Marines on the march. We will return to Pageantry of the Corps on the History Channel. Now, the United States Marines Parade and all that goes into making it unforgettable.
present or accounted for. United States Marine Drum and Bugle Corps, all present or accounted for. The young men and women that become members of the Commandant's own are chosen from civilian life from throughout the United States. The young men that we have today are probably some of the best musicians in the world. He's given a, a, an entire repertoire that he not only has to be a play, but he also has to memorize. And uh, if anyone has had to uh, uh, memorize 20 or 25 compositions of varying lengths and degrees of difficulty, committed totally to memory. And then on top of that, they must learn an entire 20-minute marching demonstration. Sound! Officer's call! <laughs> A long line of mascot bulldogs named Chesty, after Hero General Chesty Puller, have held traditional ceremonial duty. These are the only Marines entitled to interment with honors on the barracks grounds. ceremonial flourish called presentation of the colors only the color guard of the marine barracks washington dc is granted the honor of carrying the battle colors of the united states marine corps alongside the stars and stripes
history of the core on the history channel what a cake does is keep your pants right into position so that as when you raise your arm and start doing all those gyrations that i do the pants stay exactly where they're supposed to be theoretically we're very proud of this red coat it's been part of our tradition since we started out in 1934 this is not a hat never call it a hat it is a cover Put that on very sharply. Make sure it's horizontal. Make sure I can get two fingers under the bill. And we're ready to roll. Sound off! Sound off!
brigade is formed. Take your post, sir. straight out of the marine manual but brought to a perfection awesome even among marines it is a perfection dearly paid for we drill from approximately seven in the morning to sometimes as late as seven or eight o'clock at night and it's using what they call muscle memory doing a technique over and over and over again until the marine does it precise in exactly the way the instructors want it. This wrist has is, got to be straight like this, okay? And when you do that, you got to remember, control this right here. This is not going to be out to the right or to my right, to your left. It's got to be straight. Two and butt. Not bad. Butt placement's bad. Sanders, butt away. Freeze. Freeze until an instructor gets you to correct your movements. Great fist, lock the elbow. Faces go from smiles to very stern. And we call that face power, which means they don't move around, they don't squint, they don't touch anything, and they will stand there in excess of 45 minutes at a time without flinching. The Marine side. Barracks stunning oh. manual of arms drill, 250 Marines in movements as oh. exquisitely coordinated as a finely jeweled oh. watch, will be the magnificent oh. build-up oh. to the breathtaking precision oh. of the silent drill team. We will return to pageantry of the core on the core on the History Channel. When people come to see the parade, they see the showcase of the United States Marine Corps. Ceremonial at A special pride of the Corps and the centerpiece of the parade is the United States Marine Silent Drill Team. The platoon executes as a drill sequence with no verbal commands, but everything is on a count. And it's a mental count that every Marine from start to finish memorizes. And they work so much together as a unit that they know exactly what every man in the unit's going to do. like a metronome where a metronome counts the musicians beats the marines use the hand slaps and the weapon slaps to keep their count steady
the other drill teams are good. It's just they're not, I, I don't think they're as good as the Marine Corps drill team. going to the drill or being inspected or if I'm inspecting the Marine, the biggest fear is to drop a weapon. He throws it out and it looks like it just flew out of nowhere. I catch the rifle, I stop, and I face my, my double, that's my mirror. And we go through a, spin, a sequence of spins and tosses and throws and he mirrors what I do. He uh, pops up his weapon, spins it, he opens the chamber, then he throws the rifle to me, and I spin it. I look at, I look at the chamber, and I look into the, the muzzle, and I do a little, a little bit of spins, and I throw the rifle up onto my shoulder, and I throw it over the shoulder to the Marine, and then he catches it. just complete concentration. I'm looking at my Marine, he's looking at me. And I suck off some of his confidence and he brings my confidence off of him. So we make each other confident as we're going through the events. Return to pageantry of the core on the History Channel. Channel.
said that never in history had anyone heard a battle marine use the word patriotism. But then, after you've lived and died the word for a couple of hundred years, you don't have to say it. Any more than you have to say glory or always faithful. Where there are United States Marines, there will always be those things. And a rousing heritage of drums, bugles, and red and blue-coated pageantry to celebrate. Now you can own a video cassette of this program. Call 1-800-708-1776 and you'll receive the program you've just seen for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling. Call 1-800-708-1776. Henry Fonda and E.G. Marshall go head-to-head -head in collision course. Truman versus MacArthur, next on Movies in Time. And tomorrow night, witness the terror as it happened. The L.A. earthquake of 1994, at 9 Eastern, 10 Pacific.